Hi, I'm Chrissy Dittmore here with your Mobility Minute. Just got done with the ITE annual meetings uh, webinar and I was obviously talking about mobility as a service and there were a lot of questions from the audience on all of the different aspects of what mass can do, how it's being approached in different countries. One of the questions was specific to the mass business models and since that has been an ongoing topic of conversation in social media recently, I'd like to actually introduce you to another approach. And it's part of a research paper that I published with ITS World Congress that will be coming out later this year. But it's the concept of a mass business model and a mass operating model. And the fact that those are two separate but together things. So you have the private sector business model, which will be the packages of services and offerings, whether that's a full upfront monthly cost, the kind that WIM has introduced, or if it's a subscription set that's under a flat rate like CityMapper has done, or even just an access to a set of services, sort of like Uber and Lyft have done. The different side of that is the public sector approach, which is actually the mass operating model. And under that approach, you can have the business models that are gonna vary amongst vendors, but also the operating model allows entities, agencies, um, whether you are public or private even, really the managing authorities to define the business rules in an area where mass entities can operate. That means we're going to have to start identifying data sharing arrangements. We have to understand what API we're going to use commonly across those areas. Obviously, GDPR in the UK is a is a really good example of how to require some of those things. But this is what's really gonna be necessary to move mass forward in a way that incorporates the public and the private interest. We continue this conversation next week. And until then, I'm Chrissy, and this is your Mobility Minute.